Ah, the Miramichi River. We're here in the fall, and we're pushing it to the very end of the open striper season. That's a full 180 from our last trip. Well, it is a good one. Ooh, that's a pretty fish. That's a nice fish. Wow. It's a big fish. <laughs> Look at this thing rip. Since the Miramichi's striped bass population is currently booming, we're going to take advantage of these hard-fighting, beautiful fish. The Fish in Canada Show, brought to you in part by the City of Miramichi, Atlantic Canada's great outdoors. Ram trucks, built to serve. Prince Craft boats, dominate the waters. And Garmin, plot your paradise, reel them in. Yes, we're in for some good fishing. Ah, the Miramichi River. It was once known as one of the best Atlantic salmon fisheries in not only the nation, not only North America, but arguably on the entire planet. This gorgeous stretch of water cuts through some of the most beautiful Eastern Canadian landscapes and ultimately ends up emptying into the Miramichi Bay in the Gulf of St. Lawrence. And it's here that we find the quintessential New Brunswick community, the city of Miramichi. If you noticed, Anne said, once known as, and that's because in this current era, the Miramichi's Atlantic salmon population is only a fraction of what it used to be. The river still has a reasonably healthy, self-sustaining run of Atlantic salmon, but it's not like the past. Such a sad story, as they certainly are an iconic fish. Some say the decline in salmon population is due to the rising water temperatures caused by global warming. Others say it was due to the massive aerial spraying in 1952 of DDT that was sprayed over the entire Miramichi area. This was done to combat the spruce budworm. But the real damage of this event wouldn't be felt until the early 1960s, when it was discovered that aerial spraying had a catastrophic effect on the watershed, including the Miramichi River. It's estimated that only one-sixth of the salmon population in the Miramichi actually survived the aerial pesticide spray program. It's a catastrophe that the Miramichi Atlantic salmon never fully recovered from. There's also another theory to the salmon decline, which is due to the predator fish species finding their way to and migrating up the Miramichi River. One of the main suspect species is the striped bass. Now, although this fish is indeed a voracious feeder, we're having a hard time finding solid evidence stating that stripers are actually decimating the Atlantic salmon population. So, with all that said, we're going to leave the salmon population alone. However, since the Miramichi's striped bass population is currently booming, we're going to take advantage of these hard-fighting beautiful fish. This isn't our first trip to the Miramichi for stripers. We were here a few years ago in the spring of the year, and let me tell you, the fishing was insane. That is crazy. Oh my God, look at this. Look at the size of that. Oh, oh, oh. Look at this. What a, oh. oh my God. There's an estimated 250,000. I don't care what river you're on. That's a lot of fish, man. Look at them all. Wow. This is nuts. That I've never seen before in any fishery. Along with catching numerous stripers, Ange, myself, and the production team captured the inaugural 2015 Miramichi Striper Cup, a tournament solely devoted to the strongest bass on the East Coast. Let's fast forward to this trip, and we're here in the fall, and we're pushing it to the very end of the open striper season. That's a full 180 from our last trip. This is a big fish. I landed in New Brunswick, that lumbering country. Before we hit the water on this episode, I think we need a little good luck incentive. So, we're going to start this fishing trip with some pure East Coast flavor by attending a good old beer machine kitchen party. Yeehaw! Well, listen, thank you very much for, for coming here tonight. We were absolutely happy to have you here in our kitchen. 
The boat was called the Alexander, and that's the name of the song. So, from what Angela and I have figured out, a kitchen party takes place in the kitchen because that single room is the heart of most homes. First off, the kitchen has a relaxing atmosphere. Next, with logical thinking, the fridge is right there. Um, can you say lots of cold beer? The year was 1902, the day the good kitchen... Next, because kitchens are often smaller than the other rooms in the house, the party gets real cozy. Uh, we're in the kitchen, so food is just a step or two away. Finger foods and desserts are the deal here. And finally, the music. Celtic is the traditional style, but honestly, if you request it, these talented musicians will probably know it and play it in foot stomping style. Now that we have our blessing of kitchen party good luck, it's finally time to hit the water. With late fall fishing comes cool air, as well as cool water temperatures. Through experience, Pete and I know how to bundle up for the cold late fall days on a boat. However, we're not sure how these Miramichi striped bass will be affected by the almost frigid water temperatures below the surface. We both fish them in the late fall, but never this late. We're going to try a variety of baits and tactics and attempt to figure out the mood and activity level of the fish and hope that just maybe, maybe, we can get into a little top water bite. I don't think he's feeling too heavy, but He's coming too easy. He's coming in real. He's a swimmer. <laughs> Maybe he's swimming towards you. Who knows? Better get a bucket. <laughs> <laughs> Better get the bucket if that's the best thing we can get. I know this guy wants to do everything else to me, too. They're such a cool looking fish. There we go. There go. On the glide bait? Yep. Talk to me. Oh, uh, I on love the glide it. bait. I love it. Is he big? Ah. Uh, that's what we were hoping to get these fish going on the glide baits, but. Oh, yeah, he's better. Yeah? A little bit. He, he pulled. He got hooked nice on that back hook, though, Did the he? way they're supposed to look. Look at that. Perfect. Yeah. For it. Underneath, look at that. Oh, wow. So he, he missed it. Yeah, he slashed at it again. Yeah. We've had so many look at that bait today and yeah. do that and not take it. Just a quick look here at this bait. We've uh, changed the, the, the hooks on. Normally, they come with treble hooks out of the box. But the laws here in New Brunswick on uh, Miramichi state that you have to use a single Siwash hook or a single hook. You can use more than one on a bait, up to two or three actually, but they have to be single hooks, not uh, triple hooks. And the other thing too is that the barbs have to be squeezed down. So that's why this bait looks a little bit weird compared to the normal configuration that we'd be using. And I don't think it affects the action of the bait all that much, hey Pete? Have you noticed? I think it's just, just about as good. Yeah. Got one. Anything? I can't tell, buddy. Yeah, it's a little bigger. Yeah, maybe a little bigger. Nice. Okay, they're getting bigger. There you go. Thank you. Lay them right down on the floor and I'll deal with them. You'll deal with them. Nice. Nice. So maybe maybe they don't want to come right up on the top. I don't know. Yeah, I'm thinking, eh? <sighs> Beautiful. Okay, they're here. We just got to catch them now. We get the bigger ones. Oh, I'm on now. Oh, that's me, buddy. Oh, a whole different angle here now. <laughs> I know it's different. <laughs> now he's got a lot of current to work with on. Yeah, you. exactly. Ooh, 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 that sounded ooh, great. Ooh, ooh, sounded really good, didn't it? I gotta just sit this guy. Oh here. yeah, that's a good fish. Good one. Okay. Yeah, that's a good fish. Good. Don't get off. Put him in the net, and make it easier for you. You got him. Okay. You know what? He's not bad, Ant. No. He's not bad at all. No. I mean, he's not giant, but look at him. He's look long. Solid. He's long, eh? He was a long distance trawler, yeah. that boy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> little wee yeah, mouths beautiful. on him like a little smallmouth. Yeah. Can you imagine a school of a couple hundred of those chowing down on, on bait down there? Insane. They're voracious. Yeah. They really are. They're like a pack beautiful of Beautiful fish. I love them. Now, theory has it, by the way, that when you go to your favorite uh, fishmonger and order up some uh, Chilean sea bass at 25 bucks a pound, that's what you're getting right there. <laughs> well, he is a good one. 
That's a nice fish, buddy. Yeah. I'll get I'll get the net. Oh, nice. Bring Ready? them home, buddy. Here we go. Nice. Good fish. Nice. Oh, yeah. Right okay, on. what did you do? I swam it back right from the word go. I didn't let it go near the bottom. It's just right Because I saw those fish school up on yeah. the top, right? Up high on the live scope. So we saw about eight fish on the live scope way up. And we're nine feet of water, so I just started swimming it. There we go. Beauty. Gorgeous fish. Typical double? Yeah. Wow, though, no, think about it. This is giant. This guy's a giant. It's bigger than anything we've had on today. Not sure if you noticed, but Ange and I are fishing both upwind and downwind. The reason for this is all about anchor positioning. If the water is deeper than eight feet, once we find the fish, we use our force trolling motor in anchor mode to hold us facing into the wind, allowing us to precisely work the school. If the water is under eight feet, we drop our power poles while facing downwind. This allows us to freely scan with our trolling motor while viewing our forward facing sonar and again, working a specific group of fish. Boat control is everything. Typical double? Yeah. Wow, though, think about it, how, how fun this is for double headers, you know what crazy, I mean? Crazy like, fishery. Like, there is a point where you're gonna crazy. get them every cast. Crazy fishery. That is Best insane. part about it all, too, is that we're, I would say, as the crow flies, we're no more than 10 miles from the city itself, the yeah. city of Miramichi. And these, and this is just 10 miles of the river. It goes on that away, that away, that away. And they're, every single arm is loaded with these stripers. Got one. <laughs> there are literally, literally thousands of them. Twice a year they come into the river. Some of them are in here all year round, but in terms of the big run, you've got the spring run, which is the traditional spawning season for these fish. And then this fall run, this incredible fall run that we're on. And they're basically in here just chowing down on other fish that are starting to head out to sea and right from the ocean all the way up as far i even told as far as 40 50 miles straight up you'll find striper bass in this river that are in here to feed in the fall and then some of them will stay in here all winter long um, and then they'll head out in the spring after the ice is out but twice a year you get this type of fishery and it, and it is every bit as good as it looks by the way we we've literally with our garmin units we have seen Oh. Thousands of fish today. Thousands of fish in here. Guaranteed. Uh, guaranteed. Yeah. You can probably catch 100 or 200. Oh, you can get 150, like 200 like fish a day without any problem at all. No ultralight fishing. No, no, God. Could you imagine trying to do this with ultralight? You fun. couldn't do it. Somebody was saying that they'd like to fish him on a fly rod. Oops. <laughs> on a fly rod. <laughs> yeah. With streamers. I bet you I'd be crazy. Oh, it'd be insane. As well on this trip, our good buddies, Steve Nizwicki and Jeff Wilson are on a mission. We've employed them to supply us with the ultimate Miramichi dinner, professionally prepared striped bass, also known as Chilean sea bass. No, no, no. They aren't cooking the fish. They're catching the stripers in an easy to access and very popular area using a totally different method than we're using. Their job is to catch a few keeper fish, which we'll have prepared by a chef, and then of course consumed by the four of us. If that ain't icing on the cake, then I don't know what is. Now, getting back to Ange and I, we're still hoping for the ultimate in all of bass fishing, a topwater bite. So far, we've found deeper active fish that are hitting soft plastics, which by the way, worked great on our last visit here in the spring. And as well, they're slamming our newly discovered slow sinking twitch bait. We're certainly not complaining, we're just hoping. This is a big fish. It's the beauty of what we Look do this rip call, calling live scope, because we literally went along this bank and I said, Ange, they're right there. And he looked at the live scope, saw the direction, he cast out and he hooked that fish up. That is the beauty of it. You're fishing where there's fish and not where there's not fish. That's oh. the nice part about live scope. We brag about it and talk about it and everything else, but I'm telling you, this is giant. This guy's a giant. As, as far as what it feels like, it's it's bigger than anything we've had on today. Really? Eh? He's ripping. He's ripping me right out there. Well, you want to chase him or? Uh, 
Don't, let's leave stay for now. Stay, stay locked. Stay locked. Stay locked. Is, uh, I can waypoint it too if we have to move. But. Yeah. If we if I get low on my spool here, we'll go after him. I got lots of lines still on him. Pete's got on that nice twitch bait, that slide and glide we call it, from Yozuri. And I just put a chunk of plastic on because these fish are also feeding on eels up here in the mirror. There he is. I just, I just saw a glimpse of him. Did you? And he's fighting like crazy. He's fighting like giant. No, he's no, not. No, he's not a big he's fish. Tiny. He oh kicked my your God. butt. Look at this thing. Boy, he's tough. <laughs> oh my God. Look at him cooling. <laughs> I could have swore that would have been I, a big Oh, fish. I thought it was a 20-pounder. You know what, though, I've noticed, Ange? Every one out of every 10 to 15 of these fish are stronger than the other ones. Yeah, yeah, there's something like, about them. Like, it's just there's something about the way they're built, or uh, if it's a male to female thing, I don't know what it is, but there are, there are definitely stronger fish here, as per length. <laughs> this is the hardest part right here. They know your hand is coming. Oh, yeah, I thought he was twice oh, that size. 20 pounder, I thought, for sure. <laughs> it's not bad, I mean. No, we'll take him. <laughs> but oh. when you can get into a body of water where the possibilities of getting probably 30, 40, maybe 50 of that quality of fish, Pete's got one on <laughs> Every day that you go out, it's worth the drive, I'm telling you. Oh yeah. Wow. Even these little guys, it's so much fun. <laughs> it's so much fun. You bring your, this is a family fishery right here. Yeah. You bring your family out here, and, you're, and you're, if you're a, a guy, your wife and your kids, I'm telling you what, all day long, they will love catching these things. Today's hotspot is quite typical of not only good fall striper fishing, but a good river fishing area in general. The waypoint on your screen puts you right there. This hotspot is at the mouth of an incoming creek. Locations like this are one of the main fishing areas that Pete and I are always on the lookout for. Doesn't matter if it's on a lake or a river, incoming water is key. When it comes to striped bass at this hotspot, we love throwing hard baits like Yozuri's 3DB twitch bait and pencil popper but we always include some kind of soft plastic and jig as well. For more hotspots like this one, check out fishingcanada.com. Definitely feels like a heavier fish. They're, Ooh. they're an ocean run fish. They're so strong. Dude, you might have a big in here. And the captain said, heave me boys, haul in the sails, haul through the wind and the roar of the gale. And he said, Our pre-planned topwater attack didn't start out as we hoped. It seems like the fish aren't properly set up for it. Now we know they're here because we can see them on the live scope. They just won't come up for our bait. It may be that they're a little too deep. Slack. Definitely feels like a heavier Slack fish. Tide. But these fish are so deceiving, eh? They've yeah. got the current. They're, they're an ocean-run fish. They're so strong. I've always said saltwater fish are ridiculously strong. Oh. Like, and these stripers are no... Well, they live all their life no fighting tides to it. and currents. Yeah. So. yeah. And, and staying away from sharks. Exactly. <laughs> Dude, you might have a big in here. Yeah, I don't know, but he's definitely pulling drag. Oh, there he is. Not, you can't hand bomb them in. That's, no. that's the one thing about it. <laughs> no. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Coming at you. No, not that far. Oh, there you I got go. Oh, that's a pretty fish. That's a nice fish, bud. Wow. Nice. And you, you look at this. It was just sitting there. Look at this. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh that's nice. That's what we're looking God, for. That is nice. Unbelievable. Gorgeous. Unbelievable. Thousands of these things in here. Thousands of them. What a tremendous! Can you imagine living on a fishery like this every day? Oh, dude, I'd be so spoiled. I'd be my arms would be sore every day. <laughs> you would beautiful. never have to join the gym. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that's almost. That's probably just at the tip of the slot, right? If you're going to keep know. a fish. Yeah, I don't even. Yeah. I don't even know how to. I don't even know what the 20, slot is. Twenty-four centimeters, or is it twenty-four inches? <laughs> We don't even know, yeah. we're not keeping them. We have somebody else that's doing that for us that's gonna be doing some live bait fishing and uh, we're actually going to get them to catch a couple of those so we can uh, have them prepared at the Rod Hotel where we're staying 
and have a fresh feed of those things because they are spectacular. So we're definitely onto a solid striper pattern now. A consistent bite in 10 plus feet of water. But we still haven't accomplished what we came here to do. And that is get them on top water. But don't stick a fork in us yet. In next week's part two of this episode, we'll give you a little recap from today. We'll let you into Steve and Jeff's boat. We'll show you how a depth change and a change of weather could make a world of difference. And best of all, the ultimate mirror machine chow down. You don't want to miss it. Oh, boy. Oh, 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 oh. Buddy, that was crazy. That is huge. What was that? That's him, buddy. I got him. I got him. Oh, oh there you go. Oh, bigger chunk, bigger, bigger fish. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Oh, 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 man. Oh. This is it's massive. It's I can't believe how that happened. That I, whole and we saw it almost in slow motion. To get to today's wild striped bass action, we first traveled east through Ontario on Highway 401. We next hit Quebec and took Highway 20 to Highway 30 and eventually got back to Highway 20. Next, we turned southeast on Highway 85. Once in New Brunswick, we took Highway 2 east and then drove north on Highway 8 at Fredericton. We finally took 117 into the town of Miramichi, a left on Henderson Street, and on to our final destination at the Rod Miramichi Hotel. This modern day facility is the absolute perfect home away from home for the traveling angler. The accommodations are excellent, the food outstanding, there's a boat launch a block away, and you can literally fish for stripers directly adjacent to the property. The Fish in Canada Show, brought to you in part by Yozuri Fishing Lures, fish the best. Mercury Outboards, go boldly. And Outdoor Canada, Canada's only national fishing and hunting magazine. Closed captioning for this episode is brought to you by fishingcanada.com the gateway to your next fishing adventure.